spouses who marry the cool girl or a boy from your high school, what are they like now? Story 1. My mom was a cool girl all throughout high school, undergrad, and grad school, but life didn't go that well for her. For most of her life, she had to be caring for someone in the family who was ill, and that took a huge toll on her. First, it was her dad. Then it was me. I had childhood diseases and illnesses. Then her in-laws in quick succession. Then her dad again. And finally, she had to nurse my dad until he passed away from a terminal illness. She was meant to be social and have fun, and instead, she was forced to be around sickness and sadness for her best years. But she is very happy and a mentally strong person in general who made the best of things. She hosted a lot of people and events. My house growing up was full of people visiting and having fun. She's very charming and easy to talk to and has a lot of fans all the time. Though my siblings and I find her social side rather annoying. She isn't like that with us and she tells us her charming side is just an act and the real her is a lady who is constantly critical of us for our own good. She likes having groupies hanging around, people who are happy to take her help and be grateful to her. She has very few friends who could be considered her equals. She also expects a lot from other people and is constantly disappointed. She wants to be the center of everything. She doesn't know how to be a guest at anything. She somehow ends up running every event she's invited to. She sincerely believes she's helping, but it's just disrespectful sometimes, and when we tell her that, she doesn't get it. She likes to dominate everything and make decisions for everyone. We joke that if the prime minister was her friend, she'd somehow end up running the country for him. Story 2 my sister married the prom king, starting running back from her high school. He got fat, but is also a nice dude anyway who makes a killing running some kind of raw materials company. Doesn't talk about the past at all. Story 3. My brother married the popular girl. She was homecoming queen, prom queen, on varsity teams, in a band, an honor roll student, beautiful and super nice. 17-ish years later and two kids, she's still a sweetheart, beautiful and athletic. Story 4. My mom was the nerdy girl who got all the A's and had zero social skills and somehow managed to start dating my dad who was a popular, good-looking guy who everyone thought would peak in high school. She was actually advised by her family and friends that he wouldn't give her the future she was hoping for. They got married at 19, had me when they were 20, and while they were pretty broke the first few years of my life, he paid for my mom to attend law school, started his own business, and 25 years later with three kids, they're still so in love and have a pretty cushy life. And my dad actually met one of the loud voices who told my mom she was making a big mistake marrying him and she had said how she always knew he could turn out well, which she found hilarious. Story 5. My dad was crazy popular. Prom king, salutorian, running back, serious ladies man. He met my mom in a nursing class in college which he took to meet, well, girls. Lecture course and he was the only guy in a sea of women. This was the 70s. They married, he became a car salesman, developed a bad habit, and died of a heart attack at 52. I was only around for the back half, but I can tell you my father was magnetic. He was still drawing people into his orbit with his awesome personality. Just flew too close to the sun, I guess. Story 6. My high school friend was the cool guy. Everyone liked him, guys and girls. He never got into fights, was always instantly invited everywhere, and girls totally swooned over him. He's still the same awesome dude, hasn't changed a bit. He married an incredibly hot nurse. Story 7. Mom was a cool girl, still is, still literally gets stopped by strangers talking about how cool, pretty, whatever she looks and acts. But divorced, husband cheated, and widowed, second husband died, so never really managed to get a happily ever after in romance. I've only seen her as a grown-up, of course, but going by pictures and what I remember as a kid, she hasn't changed all that much. I think sometimes she's too used to people being in her orbit and will get sad if something happens where she's not involved. Not overtly so, but you can see she's expecting everyone to always want her there. Story 8. My mom was the elite Atlanta debutante and lived a very cushy life at a budding Miami country club. Beautiful and very popular at the private school. My dad grew up on a farm in Virginia. They weren't poor, but they were definitely not refined. Eventually, my father's family made it down to Miami after selling the farm. He became the lifeguard at the country club pool where my mom spent days lounging about. My parents say they saw each other and that was it. The scandal was great, the debutante and the lowly lifeguard. They just celebrated 54 years of marriage. My lowly lifeguard father made quite the life for my mom regardless of what all those elite twats said was going to happen. She gladly left the country club life for him and they are still so utterly in love, it's crazy. He carries a photo of her at the pool where they met. The only references she makes to being that girl are that they proved everyone wrong. They're beautiful and I love their story. Story 9. As it turned out, I married one of the mean girls, didn't go to her school, and didn't find out she was considered that till after the divorce. That's how it turned out. 
Then I dated one of the cool chicks, did go to her school, did know she was considered that, and she was the most amazing human being I've ever known. That one didn't work out either, though. Now I'm just retired from relationships for a bit. Strike three would kill me right now. Thanks, all. This was very therapeutic. I have friends and family that are awesome. Hopefully, I'll have more someday. For now, it's just me and my kids I'm focusing on. Story 10. I hate to be the one that bursts everyone's bubble, but my husband was a good-looking athletic guy with a great sense of humor that all of the girls adored. I was the petite blue-eyed blonde cheerleader that he chased for all four years in high school. We ended up getting together after high school graduation and were engaged six months later. I should have kept running from him like I did in school. He's a compulsive liar and he's stolen prescription medication from me to get... He's very jealous and has accused me of having an affair with every male I've ever worked with, all without any merit whatsoever. It got so bad at one point that he told me I needed to quit my job and stay home with my son. Then he criticized me for not having a job. I teach high school English and he's jealous of my male students because he claims he sees the way they watch me and look at me. He's made my life hell. He criticizes and ridicules me for being a diabetic, saying he never intended to marry a cripple, which is hardly the case. I'm happy to say that he'll be getting served with divorce papers very soon. God help the woman who takes my place because he can't do anything for himself. He's never paid a bill, made his own doctor appointments, etc. He's exhausting. He's also that guy who likes to tell our son what a stud he was in school and how he eventually got the girl he wanted. While dating, he did portray himself to be the man he thought I would see as husband material. However, I quickly saw it all as an act shortly after we married. If I had to do it over again, I would have left the country to avoid him. The only good thing to come out of our marriage is my son. I'm sorry that my story was the nightmare in the bunch. I'm just keeping it real. Story 11. I sat next to the popular guy every day, pretty much for five years, and I was so afraid of speaking to him. I'd watch him and his friends picking each other up and shoving the chosen one into lockers or chasing each other around into a pylon and throwing their shoes at each other. Typical school stuff. They were rowdy and loud and intimidating, but he was a quiet yet seriously funny one, and I crushed on him hard for years. He remembers me as the little blonde girl who didn't speak to anyone because I was so anxious all the time. He also protected his sister from some creeps every break time and she'd come to find him for safety from bullies. Should have spoken to him sooner when school finished because we have the same music taste and we get on well enough. Now at 26 and we have a six-month-old daughter together, my daughter from a previous relationship, and we just got engaged last weekend. I adore him. He's handsome, charming, and funny, and I would do anything for this man as he would for me. Story 12. He was the one who had the six-pack that all the girls swooned over. Very popular. I was not. Saw him just after leaving high school and started going out. Ended up getting married in our early 20s. God knows why. I guess we thought it was just what happened next. He never grew up, though. All he wanted to do was play online games, but I mean like constantly. He would get in from work, walk straight past me to the spare room, straight online and play until the early hours. Get a bit of sleep and go back to work. Same thing, again and again. Never wanted to go anywhere, just wanted to play. Eventually, I gave him an ultimatum. He chose the game. From what I gather, he's remarried to someone else we went to school with and has two kids now. I was told she had to give him an awful lot of ultimatums before he eventually grew up. Story 13 Not sure if he was necessarily cool, but my dad was the prefect and head boy of his school, got along nicely with everyone, and was responsible. They didn't have prom there, so that was the highest honor you could probably get. Worked hard and all and had his classmates help to tutor him. His grades didn't end up great because he came in late to school once and got after-school detentions. He would go home late and finish homework overnight, then get up at the crack of dawn to wash his father's bus and be late to school again, or detentions. He dropped out and transferred to another school. Now he's a retired policeman who's working in security to send me and my siblings to school, doing his best still. In my mom's view, he's still handsome and she calls him a multitude of cutesy names that he pretends to hate. Life is always as tough as normal, but he keeps going. Story 14 I always think about this guy in my high school. He was super popular and the best friend of the worst bully I ever had. I won't say his name, but he went on to be a pro football player and I always idolized him because of his actions on one single day. He pulled me aside and told me that he noticed I almost never ate lunch. He gave me $20 and told me to make sure I ate well and that he was sorry he was so mean to me. Anyone who has ever hesitated on apologizing, I will never forget that person and I will never think he didn't deserve his popularity. I was picked on, but bitter. Story 15. We didn't go to school together, but I married the captain of the cheerleading team. She's a very down-to-earth, good human being who has never been one to be an elitist or snob in any way. 
She does wish she still had her high school body, who doesn't, but she looks more beautiful to me now than she does in old pictures. We have a large family and are very happy. Every once in a while, I'll be acting goofy with my kids and their friends will give me the side eye and I'll casually drop, you think I'm a nerd, huh? Well, maybe so, but I marry the captain of the cheerleaders. For some reason, this gets me instant credibility with young men. Story 16. I married the popular guy. We didn't go to the same schools or even in the same city, but met when we were 30. Extremely charismatic and likable. Also used to having everything handed to him and done for him. He constantly spoke about how, prior to me, he always was with hot girls and that he basically settled for me. I know I'm pretty, but I'm also overweight. He didn't seem to realize that while he was in shape in high school from playing sports, he ballooned up as an adult. We divorced earlier this year. He's already living with potential wife number three. And me and his first wife have bonded over how terrible he treats his spouse. Yep, he's 35 and working on wife number three. But he doesn't think he has behaviors that needs to be changed because he spent his whole life hearing he was the best. Story 17. We're divorced now, but my ex-wife was a popular cheerleader in high school. I didn't even know much about her younger years when we were dating. I remember cracking up when she busted out a yearbook to show me. She said she loved high school and had a great time, had lots of friends, and ran with the popular kids. I was a total opposite. I hated those years of my life. I remember telling her that she probably would have disliked me if we had known each other as teenagers. I was a computer nerd that was into painting and graphic design. I was bullied a lot just for being socially awkward and super introverted. I was always carrying around and reading books instead of interacting with anyone. Anyway, the ex-wife isn't doing so well from what her current soon-to-be ex-husband told me. She had, and still has, a drinking problem when we divorced, but I got out relatively unscathed. She had a kid with this other guy a couple of years ago and ended up getting a DUI, not her first. She lost her license and they ended up splitting up. And due to her alcoholism, she got an order of protection against her after several domestic disturbances where she got violent. He is still going through the court system, but he will likely get full custody of their kid because she has violated a couple of orders of protection to come after him. She's on probation now too, which I think she's violated as well. Overall, her life sounds like a mess and I feel bad for the guy because he is essentially me if I had decided to stay with her. I feel bad for her too because I know a lot of her issues are due to her dysfunctional childhood. We tried therapy twice, but she was quite hostile and resistant to it. Story 18. I was a loser who married the prom queen. Dating was interesting because she came from a rich family that gave her everything she wanted. I grew up in a very poor family. and We're talking about 13 people in a one-bathroom house poor. She went to house parties and did all kinds of crazy stuff. I, meanwhile, was home hanging out with my nerd friend watching Star Trek. I thought she was kind of snobbish, but turns out she's the kindest person you might ever meet. We moved in together and she had no concept of money. Her family didn't like her moving in with a guy before she married. They really liked me, minus the whole poverty thing, and cut her off financially. Sink or swim, baby. My friends warned me she'd be gone by the time the rent was due and we couldn't afford it. Instead, she got her first job at a department store while in college full-time and we cut back on everything. She still had a closet full of designer clothes and shoes but didn't buy anything new for a long time. Stopped eating out every meal. She couldn't cook to save her life, but I could, so we didn't go hungry. Overnight, she became a normal college student. Common people is about her, lol. She finished college, we put her through law school, and she made crazy money right after she graduated. I didn't make quite as much, but we were doing well for ourselves. Then the recession hit and we were back at square one. She stuck by me again through one of the worst times of my life. We had nothing. We had to move in with my still poor parents for two years to dig ourselves back out. Now, we're not rich by any means, but we're doing okay now. She still has her prom queen streak. She likes to dress up and buy nice things. But she now goes to thrift stores and garage sales and refuses to pay full price for anything. She got very good at DIYing stuff and she made us a beautiful home filled with stuff she made herself including furniture. I'm very happy. Friends warned me she would take off after college when we went broke. She would cheat on me. She is way out of my league, looks-wise. And that she's not the kind of girl to stick around long. Turns out she's in this for life, and we came close to splitting up a few times, but she always reeled us back in. I put her on a pedestal, which probably isn't good, but it works for us. People don't see it, but she does the same to me. She gets overwhelmed easily, but I'm pretty good at fixing stuff when it goes bad. She still experiences things for the first time and it's really cool to see. For example, she saw an armadillo for the first time and she was crazy excited. She was never into nature, lol. She stuck by me through some really dark times and I'll never know why. I don't deserve her and she knows it, but I remember that every morning I wake up and try to do things that make me deserve her. 
Also, I got to the gym and learned how to dress and do my hair because it sucks being the ugly skinny dude next to the hottest woman in the room. She still looks like she's out of my league, but at least it's not too bad now. She gets hit on a lot and I can tell it annoys her or sometimes makes her angry, but I could care less. Our kids adore her and so do my parents. My mom thinks she's helpless because she remembers back when she was helpless, but she's proud of her now for how far she's come. Now I'm tearing up just thinking about it. Story 19. My dad was a senior when my mom was a sophomore. My dad was practically Danny freaking Zuko. My mom, she was a total dork. She had awesome poofy curls, Coke bottle glasses, and headgear to boot. My dad used to pay her to do his homework. My mom married a total piece of crap. She calls him her practice husband and had my brother for two years before becoming pregnant with me. She couldn't handle the trauma that he was putting them through and kidnapped my brother and ran away from him when she was still pregnant with me. She managed to get an apartment in the town where she went to high school. Every day was a struggle. One night, she was having a particularly difficult time with my three-year-old brother and eight-month-old self and ordered a pizza for dinner. When the pizza guy showed up, my brother was running around being an ass, and my mom threw little me into the pizza guy's arms and said, will you hold this, please? While she proceeded to chase her three-year-old around the apartment. Now, this poor man is standing there with an infant in his arms in the middle of pure chaos. I've been told he fell in love with me right then and there and my mom about 20 minutes later. I still have the pizza jacket he was wearing. They dated for two years before she finally agreed to marry him. They've been happily married for 28 years. He was working at the pizza chain that later became Domino's and going to school to become a teacher. DJ's pizza was a side hustle while he was a student teaching at the high school. He wanted to teach auto mechanics to help inspire troubled kids to stay in school so that they can go to college. He emancipated himself from his parents when he was 16, not because he was having trouble at home, he was, but because he was ready to start building his life. He was taking classes at the community college by 17 years old. He was paying my mom to do his high school homework. He was too busy with college, apparently. I took his shop class when I was in high school. He was a strong advocate for high school being a waste of time. After finishing high school and community college, he graduated from the University of Michigan and went back to community college to continue taking classes for many years. He has so many diplomas and degrees that I can't even keep track. My mom, too, thanks to his influence, he saved us. He married my mom when I was two years old and adopted my brother and me when I was eight. And when they had enough money, we moved out of the slums to the upper middle class suburbs of Chicago where he taught auto at a very prestigious high school. When my brother and I were on our own and the suburbs sucked him dry of all joy and passion for what he was doing, they moved back to Michigan. They now live in total paradise on 80 acres of land in the woods with their three dogs. He has his own shop in the barn behind the house and he's teaching auto at the local community college. He and my mother are very happy living the lives they built for themselves. Apparently, his shop teacher inspired him and somehow convinced him that he could make his life into whatever he wanted it to be. And he made it his goal to be that inspiration for his kids too. He's now living the life that he wanted to live and doing exactly that. Story 20. Found out recently, 30 male, that my dad was extremely popular in high school from my aunt. I had no idea he was an all-star football player with lots of college offers and was prom and homecoming king. Never talks about it, but he's doing well. Two kids, a dog, and a loving wife. In my opinion, he's still winning. 